Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Coalition of Pakistani opposition parties stages rally against Prime Minister Imran Khan. Members of the Alba TCP celebrate 16 years of regional integration in Latin America. Hamas is ready to assume talks with the Palestinian Authority government. Auto workers at Kia Motors in South Korea continue to strike for better wages. And finally, we look at the impact of France's global security bill on police accountability. In our first story, tens of thousands of people gathered in the city of Lahore in Pakistan to demand the resignation of Prime Minister Imran Khan on Sunday. The rally was the third mass gathering organized by the Pakistan Democratic Movement, which was established in September as a coalition of 11 opposition parties. The movement has accused the Khan administration of rigging the elections which were held in 2018. Opposition parties have also alleged widespread corruption within the administration and a heavy influence of military over the government matters. Leaders of the PDM have also stated that the issues of unemployment, rise in inflation, media censorship and persecution of political opponents are the reasons behind the protests. The rally drew the support from workers and leaders from across the political spectrum, including the left-leaning Awami National Party and the far-right Jamaat Ahli Al Hadith. Notably, the party of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is also part of the coalition. Sharif is currently living in exile in the UK after being forced to resign on corruption charges in 2017. The current administration has denounced a rally as an attempt to distract from Sharif's charges. The PDM has announced a march to the capital city of Islamabad in January to further mount pressure on the administration. In our next story, the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America, People's Trade Treaty, that's ALBA TCP, celebrated its 16th anniversary on December 14th. The alliance is informed by the strategic vision of commanders Fidel Castro and Hugo Chavez and was first established to serve as a counter to the free trade area of the Americas. Founded in 2004, the organization serves as a platform to foster the social, economic and political integration of Latin American and Caribbean countries. The 18th summit of the organization is scheduled to be held today in the form of a virtual conference. Member states are set to discuss the political situation in the region as well as the challenges to economic recovery under the COVID-19 pandemic. This year's summit also marks the return of the plurinational state of Bolivia to the organization following its defeat of a US-backed coup. The bloc now has 10 member nations. These are Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, Dominica, Granada, St. Vincent and Grenadines, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Lucia. In our next story, Gaza-based Palestinian group Hamas has announced that it is ready to resume talks with the Fateh Party-led Palestinian Authority government. The announcement was made on Sunday after various factions called for inter-Palestinian dialogue and unity. Rifts had emerged among the factions after the PA government had announced that it would resume security coordination with Israel in November. Relations had previously been cut off when Israel had announced its plans to annex parts of the occupied West Bank in May. This move had been, had been criticized as by Hamas as constituting a strong impediment to achieving reconciliation between the factions. However, Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh announced the movement's readiness to build a unified Palestinian national front. Tensions have remained between Hamas and Fatah ever since the collapse of the unity government following the 2006 elections. In the fighting that occurred in the following year, Hamas gained control over Gaza while Fatah constituted the PA government in Ramallah. Previous attempts at reconciliation included a series of talks in Turkey in September and Cairo in November. The agenda was to form Palestinian unity and the decision to hold presidential and legislative elections within six months was taken. However, disagreements remained regarding the dates for the polls. In our next story, auto workers at the Kia Motors plant in South Korea are continuing their strike for better wages and working conditions. Workers are set to intensify their efforts this week and have planned four-hour partial strikes every day from December 14th to 17th. A six-hour walkout has also been scheduled for December 18th. Workers have entered their fourth consecutive week of strikes to push for a wage hike and better compensation for their work during the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes a raise of 120,000 won, which is around $110 in monthly wages, an additional 30 minutes of paid overtime and the extension of the age of retirement from 60 to 65. Additionally, workers have also demanded that 30% of the company's operating profits be set aside and distributed as bonuses. The company's response to the demands of workers was to offer stock options, gift cards and a one-time COVID-19 allowance. All these proposals were rejected by the workers. Since November 25th, nearly 30,000 workers have staged partial strikes and walkouts under the banner of the Korea Metal Workers Union. 15 rounds of talks have been held between the company and the workers union. However, no agreement has been reached so far. Kia Motors reportedly incurred production losses of over 32,000 vehicles during this time. For our final story today, we once again turn to France, 
where the global security bill is still controversy. As the country enters the third week of protests, here is Pablo Ekel from the French Journalists Union, SNJ-CGT, talking about the bill's most dangerous provisions. In this moment, we are uh, especially fighting against three articles, uh, 21, 22 and 24. In this bill, um, the, the coalition of uh, journalists, uh, unions, and uh, NGOs of uh, uh, human rights uh, are focusing especially on these uh, three articles and also in the SNMO, the, who is the national scheme of uh, maintain of order, is how the police work in during protest. So. Articles 21, 22, and 24. Why those one? 24, I start with 24 because everybody's talking about this one. Uh, it's an article who says that you cannot um, broadcast, you cannot uh, broadcast the face of policemen people while they are working because this can be used uh, against these policemen. And we all know, journalists know that it's a principle that you, you can have to uh, film and broadcast uh, policemen during their work, especially during protest, because that's the only way you have to see if they are doing well or doing wrong. And that's uh, our journalist uh, work. So that's what, why we are focused on, on 24. Then there is 21 and 22 who are very interesting too, because um, 21 allows policemen to have cameras, uh, food cameras, and to broadcast what they uh, film with these cameras to use it in, in, in the visual speech of the police, for example. And Article 22 says they can use drones. They can use drones to, to film uh, any protest and to use also these uh, images. Um, so, when, when you see those three articles, you see that police want to have their own images and they want to put out uh, journalist images. So right. they want to take uh, in control the, um, the way they can uh, say what's, what's going on in any protest. And uh, that's why journalists together and, and movie makers, documentary makers, and uh, young uh, street reporters say all of this is not a good thing because you want to take uh, in your hands the, the narrative, the visual narrative of any protest. Then the SNMO, the scheme, national scheme of uh, maintain of order, um, also uh, allows police to, to, to stop uh, the people detain the people, and then after a, a, a judge can see. Well, that's uh, mainly in the, the whole law. CGT, the union where I belong, is against the whole law. But the coalition of many unions, associations, NGO are mainly focused on these three articles and SNMO. Why? Because the, the rest of the law is uh, focused more in. Um, uh, giving more, more power to local police, for example, um, to share some issues with local policies. And you know that France has been in a, a situation of terrorism attacks uh, these uh, past uh, few months and few years. So there are people that agree with this kind of uh, law and other people that say it's, uh, it's, it's not uh, fine to share the power of national police with local police. The better thing is to have a, a stronger and bigger national police. That's all your time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,